Fred White joins us now. He's got his orange on. Fred, <laughs> it's the week before as a player. First, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's a, man, it's a Friday. It's a high school football Friday. So, you know, I'm going to catch some of the best players in the state of Georgia this weekend. So, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, uh, I, it's it's an exciting time. It's an exciting. If you scout the next Eric Berry like we did, let me know. Um, what's it like being a player and being just a week away? Um, is that? I mean, are you antsy? Are you? How do you control your emotions being this close? Man, you're tired of hitting on your own teammates. Boy, you cannot wait to see what you can do against somebody else. And I think it's the. <laughs> It's the anticipation of just getting a chance to go out there and just waylay somebody because you, I mean, you've hit your teammates in practice, but you haven't really gave them that oof at the end of it. You know what I mean? So I think now you, you get a chance to just go do it. And it, you talk about anxiety, man. I used to lay my clothes out for the whole week. Like I was in high school, just knowing that I got to be clean when, <laughs> when I go out there for the, for the ball walk and those type of things, man, it's, you want to get a chance to go out and just hit somebody and do something different and just see a different color jersey. Yeah. C Caleb and I, in, in hopes of uh, getting better, we, we at SEC Media Days when we were together, we just uh, we just knocked the hell out of each other in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Now, Dave, you get a little bit older now. I want to see you in the hospital. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, speaking of, I did a leg presses the other day for reps, and uh, I can't walk, but that happens. All right, so let's get to it. Fred's appearance brought to you by Fred. Uh, and if you need all state coverage, you can do it. How do people get a hold of you before we get into the biggest takeaways from preseason camp? Dave, they can reach us on any social media platform: Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and even X, I can't even say it right. <laughs> I forget so that yeah. it's not Twitter anymore. X. <laughs> but you can it's also know that when you watch a video on, oh, sorry. <laughs> you can I was going to say, when you watch a video on X, it's X videos now. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's just single X, so that's just kissing. <laughs> First base, I got. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Fred. I didn't mean to like, uh, cut you off, but <laughs> second, not even the Skinamax like back in the day, uh, second base. So, but hold on, let me say this real quick. By the way, fans, that was not endorsed by Fred White Allstate. Okay, <laughs> not that part. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, you can get fantastic coverage, and you'll be in good hands with uh, Fred White. He will certainly take care of you. Let's get to four downs because we're going to get to the biggest takeaways from fall camp, and we do that right now. Four downs. Four questions. Four answers. The Dave Hooker Show. Four. 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 Bounds. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. Biggest takeaways from fall camp. We're going to talk Arian Carter, Squirrel White. Tennessee's pass rush is deep. And Tennessee's offensive line has kind of stumbled down the stretch of preseason camp. We'll get Fred's thoughts on that. It's brought to you by Andy Mason. AndyMasonRealEstate.com. Andy Mason has the best prices and best service in the biz. He's in Knoxville. AndyMasonRealEstate.com. A good person that will take care of you. And when I give an endorsement to somebody, I absolutely mean it. I've known Andy, for goodness gracious, like 30 years uh, and over 40 years of experience right there in his office. So let's get to it. Cooper may be sideline on the field, but he can give us the downs. And I know that centers don't call out the snap, but it's funny. Coop here, first down. Thank you, Coop. Arian Carter, he has had a stellar preseason camp. Tell me what you've heard about him, Fred, and also answer this question. The last time that Tennessee had a dominant, not a very good, but a dominant linebacker was blank by your standards. You know, I've heard a lot of good things about him. I mean, he's a baller. He's a football player for sure. He's a guy who can get, get down on the football field. 
And he's already been looked at as a freshman All-American, and he hasn't touched the football field yet. So that kind of says a lot about his character and what type of football player he can be um, and his, his potential. I'm going to say that also in that way. Potential means you haven't done anything yet. <laughs> you got to do it on the football field against a different opponent first. But I think he has the ability to do a lot of those things. We've had a lot of good linebackers that come from Tennessee. Um, and I don't have to go way far back. But, I mean, you've had an Al Wilson. You have a Randall Thompson. You had Terry Westmoreland. You know I got to name those guys. They're, they're, they're the standard, in my opinion. Just Tyrone Hines. You've had a lot of big-name guys. You've also had Gerard Mayo. you also had Kevin Barnett. Over the last few years, though, I see someone say Daniel Batuli. I enjoy watching Daniel Batuli play. Um, I've watched Marvin Mitchell, those guys. I watched a lot of good guys play, but I'm going to go with Gerard Mayo because I think when you say great and dominant, I think he may be the most dominant of the last group of guys that I've seen. Good one. Good one. Gerard Mayo. Yeah. I can't forget A.J. Johnson. Yeah. Absolutely. I um, think AJ played very well as well. He, he he did a good job also while he was on the hill. But I, but dominant that's just dominant, dominant. I'm looking at Jerome right. Mayo. I got you. Let's get to second down, Coop. Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. Cooper Mays here. Second down. <laughs> it's Cooper Mays <laughs> in case you're curious, Caleb. Uh so Fred, we were kind of talking and trying to figure out because it seems like Squirrel White and Joe Milton just have rare chemistry. Is there any type, is there any receiver that Squirrel White reminds you of who ever played at Tennessee? Because I'm having trouble thinking of one. I feel like he's unique. I think he's unique also. And I, I don't like comparing guys. So I like for guys to be themselves and be who they are and show them what you're going to be yourself. He has a lot of speed, which is good. I think he's a small guy like a Cedric Wilson. Does he run routes like Cedric? No. Does he, you know, he has more speed than Cedric did as well. Um, and you look at the other guys that have come through in Tennessee, most of those guys are bigger than him. You know, you go from um, Meacham to um, the guy, I can't remember his name right now, he got hurt against Florida. Um, Justin Hunter and those guys, those, most of those guys are bigger. You know what I mean? Uh, Derek Rogers, a lot of those guys have been bigger. He's one of those guys that's fast and shifty. If you put the ball in his hands, he can get, get away with it. He can remind, I, I could probably say somebody maybe like a um, LaMarcus Coker, but LaMarcus Coker was a running back. So you look at him and say he, he fits the mold of a lot of different guys, but I still think he's unique. And what he can do in this offense is going to be unique. Hmm, pretty. I like the Coker thing as far as just a physical specimen. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's why we have Fred on. That's why he's awesome. Fred White, Allstate. Tennessee center Cooper Mays here. Third down. All right, so third down before we get to the one maybe negative takeaway from preseason camp, and I don't think it's all that negative. But the pass rush, I believe, this year is going to be deep. Back in the day when you guys were great, it wasn't just one guy that was a great pass rusher. It was six, seven guys. And you would rotate those in. And you had defensive tackles that could push. It was 10, 11 guys. And I'm not exaggerating for the younger ones out there that may not remember the uh, late 90s. But having a deep pass rush, how much more challenging is that for an offense when everybody's fresh and everybody rushes the passer just a little bit different? Well, I mean, because you don't have to go – 12 plays before you come out or 20 plays before you come out. I mean, you tap and you come out and get a rest. You come back and you, you're fresh. That means you should be able to go extra hard. You need to give me 110% when you come on the football field. That's one of the things that our rotation when we won the national championship and before that, and even after that, you look at how many guys we can rotate in and out. If you were tired, then come out. Because if you're out there playing tired, you got a fresh guy on, on the sideline, I'll take that fresh guy over a guy who's tired any day because you, you have a little bit more push. Now, don't get me wrong. There will be times in the game where I'm going to need my, 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 my stars out there. For, for instance, we played against Syracuse in 1998, and I look up and <laughs> all the starting defensive line on the sideline sucking wind. 
hey man, I called a timeout. <laughs> That's the only time I actually ever called a timeout in the game, but I'm sitting there thinking, uh-uh. No, it's third and four. I need you guys on the football field. What's going on? So I called a timeout, and I had to go get Darn Walker, Billy Rattler, and Sean Ellis back in the game. Hey, man, we need you on the field right now. This is important. I think if you look at the teams that <laughs> one team has won a national championship the last two years, and one of the reasons why they won a national championship, I, I, they had a good offense. I get that. They had a quarterback who was a six-year senior, all those type of things. But defensively, the last two years, that pass rush, they could interchange anybody. They had a group up front that you can just keep rotating in and out. And if you keep bringing a fresh lineman to an offensive line, play in and play out like that, it takes a toll because they don't get to switch in and out, you know, sub in and out like that on the offensive line. You want those guys to have continuity and be able to play together consistently throughout the football game. However, on the defensive line, I'm bringing a fresh body at you and I'm bringing my best every play. That's one of the reasons why Georgia won back-to-back championships, in my opinion. And I don't know if they can – I hope they can't continue that, that trend, and I think that trend is coming our way now. But if you have a defensive line – they can rush the passer. It makes your defensive backs better. It makes your linebackers better. Your complete defense is a different defense when you have guys who can pass rush and get to the quarterback. Yep, great stuff. And let's remember, Billy Ratliff wouldn't have been in the game uh, against Arkansas to create that fumble had Jeff Goldman not come over and said, hey, I, I, I need a break. And Ratliff mm-hmm. ran out there, and we saw what happened as Houston Nutt acted like an idiot and Clint Sterner couldn't hold on to the ball because he got nailed by Billy Ratliff. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he didn't get hit. I guess Billy pushed his own offensive lineman, which is almost cooler than just a natural tackle. I mean, to push, to push an offensive lineman into the quarterback and create a fumble is maybe the coolest thing you could do. And, and, and that's, the, like you said, had Jeff Coleman not tapped his helmet and say, hey, I need a breather, Billy Ratner's not even in the game because it was his set of plays to play. Yep, absolutely. Let's go to fourth down there, Caleb. All SEC center Cooper Mays here, fourth down. Thank you, Cooper. Well, Fred, speaking of all SEC center Cooper Mays, uh, does it look like he's going to start the first couple of games? We understand Ollie Lane has moved over to center. I feel like Tennessee's having some issues at left guard. They haven't gotten what they wanted out of Addison Nichols or Gerald Mincy yet. Is it too late for this is it too late to find a solution at this uh, on the offensive line before the season starts next week? No, it's next man up. Next man up mentality has to be your thought process. You got someone has to step up and you'll find out who that guy is. And the thing is, if our defensive line is doing as good as we say they are in practice right now, that would mean you're going up against good talent every week already. And that's something that can help you get better. But also, when you put those, that group of guys up against Virginia, so to speak, you know, when, when those guys are out there, then, then you're going to see what it's like. You're going to see what they're like going against someone else. Um, I think that because of the offense, our defensive line being better than what it had once was and having more depth, I think that has helped also figure out, okay, well, maybe we may be a little bit better than what we thought we were. You know what I mean? And the prime example of that is we play against Syracuse, in 1998, I had to bring that game back up. We didn't know exactly how good we were after that game was over with because Donovan McNabb went for the 31 for 30 something, 37 or something like that, and have over 300 yards and three touchdowns. And we couldn't get them on the ground. Then you go to the next week and we have four sacks. You know, I mean, like, so you, you don't know how good you are until you go up against other talent. And I think that's going to help us. Um, playing against playing against Virginia and Nashville is going to be the test for our offensive line. And I'm hoping that I feel like they're going to be okay. Um, depth is something that you always got to have. And so that means if you got three or four guys that are close and no one is actually taking the job yet, they're going to get trial by fire. And you need to grow up real fast <laughs> or you're going to lay it down. And if you leave your hat on the mound, somebody's going to pick it up and run with it. Yep, absolutely. Um, excited to say that um, uh, Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han has uh, joined us, and they will be bringing you the Vol Report with uh, Jacob Warren 
coming up and it's going to be in season and it's going to be fantastic. And uh, what, what do you think about that, Jacob? What's up, everybody? This is Jacob Warren asking you to like, subscribe and share. Dave needs this. Thank you.